All right, <clears throat> forging on with the modules. Let me get a share screen going here. Um, so I left off with uh, force over lifetime. And while you were gone, I uh, set one up here. Uh, so my particle system has now a lifetime of 10, a start speed of five. So that's, and it's a cone. So they're being blown up out of the bottom of the cone. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm emitting 10 per second here. And I've added a force over lifetime. Uh, and I have uh, motion in the X, motion in the Y, and motion in the Z. So for the X here, I start off at zero. I go up to plus 10, I go down to minus 10, and I go back to zero again. And so my, I'm getting this kind of swirling motion here where the particles are uh, uh, swirling around uh, because in the y direction it's doing this and in the z direction it's doing this. So uh, all of these forces uh, are happening uh, over time, over that lifetime of the particle, the start lifetime of 10. Um, the next one I want to add is color over lifetime. Color over lifetime uh, I, I, I can pick a, uh, I can pick a color. Uh, I'll have a gradient here and I can select my gradient. Uh, I've got colors already defined here. So here's one that starts at red, goes through green and ends up at blue. And so now if I look at my particles, they're starting off green uh, they're starting off red, going through green, and ending up as blue. Um, with the particles, uh, because they pop into existence and pop out of existence, it's often nice to make them kind of fade a bit. So here I'll, uh, I'll leave that at opaque 255, but I'll set this down, uh, this endpoint one, down to zero so that the particles kind of fade away instead of popping out of existence, they kind of fade away. And this is a, a nicer effect uh, with, with our particles. And the playback speed is at three outside of your one, so that we can see it more clearly. Uh, so color over lifetime is an important one. Uh, if you don't want them popping into existence, if you don't want them to appear abruptly, you can also add to that, that gradient. You can also add to that gradient that you want them to uh, come into existence kind of gradually as well. So now that they won't appear quite so quickly, and I'll move that green over further so that uh, so now now my particle is starting off red going through green and then to blue and they're fading into existence and fading out of existence and let's see if we can see this if I align with view here in my game view and maximize on play, and we'll see what things things look like. Another thing you might have noticed here is that I'm no longer using the default particles. I've got this snowflake particle that I'm using instead. And the, um, the nice thing about the snowflake particle uh, kind of comes into play in the next one. Oops, color by speed. Um, Color by speed uses a gradient in the same way that color over lifetime does. And by the way, these are mutually exclusive. You can't both color by speed and color by uh, over lifetime. But if we colored by speed, then the uh, velocity that these particles were moving would affect their color. Their color would be chosen 
based off a speed range that goes from zero to one. Uh, and we have speeds in the range of six to 24 here. So we could, uh, we could make our color over a lifetime. I'll turn this one off, color over a lifetime. I'll turn off and I'll turn on color by speed. And I'll use that same gradient that I had here. And uh, what did it say? It went from six to 24. So uh, when they're moving slow, it, uh, it, it's, it's red as they pick up speed. They, uh, they go blue and as they then slow down again later, uh, they turn green. So uh, color by speed. But remember, you can't do both of these. You can't do both color by speed and color by uh, color over lifetime. Um, size over lifetime, uh, we can make our particles uh, get smaller. So size over lifetime here, uh, here I'm uh, I'm starting off small and getting larger. Let me make them get really larger. So they, uh, it's too large. So the particles over lifetime start off small and uh, grow with time. And of course, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but if I had a quick in here. Uh, I can make them big to start with and then get smaller uh, during one phase of their life. I'm going to turn off size by speed. I want size over lifetime. So there, they're relatively big and they get small and they get big again and then disappear. So size over, size by speed or size by, over lifetime. Size by speed works the same way that color by speed did. Uh, the size is gonna depend on how fast they're going in that particular range. Um, now, one of the reasons I replace it with the snowflake is to show you rotation. Uh, with the default particle, it's a symmetric particle, so you can't really see it rotating. Uh, and we have two rotations here. One, we have its start rotation. Uh, and so if I specify at 20, these particles now are rotating. And of course, we can have it random between two constants. So rotating at minus 20 in one way and plus 20 in the other. So some are going clockwise and some are going counterclockwise as they rotate around. Uh, let me set that back to zero. Because I want to include here rotation over lifetime. Uh, and so the rotation over lifetime, uh, I'll set a curve and I'll make them start off small and get bigger. So they start off barely rotating and as they go further and further in their life, they rotate faster and faster. Let me crank that up to 90 so that they're really spinning when they get to the end of their lifetime. like this, uh, not rotating to begin with, rotating fast by the end of their lifetime. Uh, rotation by speed works the same way as uh, uh, the, depending how fast they're going, they will rotate. Uh, and so we can make things spin. 
um, rotation by speed. External forces, uh, there's something we'll get to later called wind zones. And uh, 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 if you turn on external forces with a multiplier that multiplies that force, uh, you can have your particles blow around in the wind fields. Uh, there's also a force field module that uh, lets you define forces in kind of a programmatic way. Um, I won't give an example of that. Now, um, let me let me take my particle system here that I've got spinning around here. I'm going to add a, a a plane here to to my world. Reset this to zero, and I'll reset this thing to zero as well. Focus in on the plane. And I guess I'm going to make the plane bigger. And I'm going to crank up the gravity on my particle system so that these things, as they whirl around, they all uh, fall to the ground. So um, 0.5 gravity. No, I'm going to need more gravity. One gravity. And let me turn off some of those various effects. Turn that off. Turn that off. And pump up the start speed to 20. Okay. So well, now my particle system is kind of acting as a fountain. And what you notice here is that the particles are going right through that plane. They don't collide with the plane unless I specify a collision module. And there are two different forms of the collision module. It can collide with a plane, in which case we have to specify a plane. So I'll bring this plane up here and I'll bring this plane up here. And so now my particles are bouncing on the plane. Now you might notice that they're also bouncing when they get outside the plane. They're also bouncing when they get outside the plane. And that's because this is a very inexpensive form of, uh, of uh, of collision detection, which just takes an infinite surface aligned with that plane and uh, bounces things off it. Uh, we can we can do some funny things with our plane. We can tilt our plane, in which case the particles will bounce off this tilted surface and kind of roll down off the side here. Uh, and this plane extends infinitely. And that may or may not be what we want it to do, but this is the least expensive form of collision. A more expensive and in some ways more interesting form of collision is if we collide with the world. And so this now is going to collide with everything in the world. And it's colliding with my tilted plane, but once it rolls off the edge of the plane, it's now falling uh, 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 without, without anything to collide with. This costs a lot more. This is a, a much more computationally uh, important uh, calculation. There are some quality settings. We can set a medium one and one thing about the medium one, you may notice that some of them leak through the plane. It's not as accurate. It doesn't catch all of the collisions. And so some of them will leak. And the low one is even worse. A lot more uh, leak through this plane uh, as they bounce off it. 
but it is computationally less intensive and doesn't cost as much uh, for our uh, particle system to uh, calculate those collisions. Um, so here I am with the kind of flat plane that they're bouncing. One of the other features of the collision is how much they bounce. Uh, a bounce of one is going to uh, not lose any energy in a bounce. A bounce of 0.5, a bounce of 0.5, they'll kind of bounce and slowly run down uh, as they run out of bounce energy. Uh, you can also specify how much lifetime they lose when they collide with something. If I set this to one, the minute they collide with something, uh, they lose all their lifetime and they disappear. Uh, so a zero, they don't take away any lifetime. Um, there's also masks that we can set for uh, whether it collides with everything. Often we'll set a terrain level and only have it collide with the terrain or only have it collide with specific things that we want that are in the various layers that we can define here. Um, we can have these collisions exert force uh, uh, and uh, that's a whole other issue that we, uh, if, if they exert force on a rigid body, they can push it around. Uh, you actually saw an example of that back when uh, I was demonstrating the fire hose in the standard assets. So collision, uh, lifetime loss, kill speed, kill speed, stuff like that. Uh, uh, you can set the radius of the colliders and you can send the coll collision messages that can be used in scripting. Uh, triggers I won't talk about because this is very much a, a scripting thing, uh, but uh, triggers can be triggered when a particle encounters a collider and we have various callbacks that we can have uh, executed when it's inside these, these uh, uh, whether it's inside, outside, it has entered or exited a, a collider uh, and we have various callbacks. Uh, we can, uh, uh, a callback would uh, trigger the on particle trigger function in the script kill would destroy the particle and ignore just ignores it. Uh, the submitter I'm going to come back and talk about later because that's a long one. Uh, texture sheet animation is kind of uh, uh, an interesting one. I'm going to go down into my renderer and I'm down in my renderer and in this case I'm going to pick um, a texture from the standard assets, uh, uh, a particle flame sheet, and I want to put that in the, in my renderer. It's got to be a material. Sorry. Um, I think I'll pick this one up uh, next time. So I'm going to stop there because this has gone on long enough. I'll stop sharing and I'll stop recording and I'll come back and pick that up uh, with the next lecture.